Welcome everyone to this episode of Basking in the Spotlight. We have us with the, have with us today the incomparable, incredible, dynamo of an individual, Ashley Wilkerson. Welcome, Ashley. That's an amazing introduction. Thank you. How are you? Thanks for having me. Um, I'm fabulous. We are so grateful to have you. And if you think that that is the only credit that I'm going to give you in this introduction, <laughs> you are absolutely incorrect. So just so you all know, um, I will not do justice to the incredible body of work um, that Ashley has conducted, but to give you a couple adjectives or descriptors that, um, that fit advocate, ally, philanthropist, educator, PhD candidate, author, and last but certainly not least, mother and wife, brilliant individual and obviously dynamo. So I'm hoping that, um, you know, that our community is going to learn a little bit more about why um, all of those fit and certainly don't do justice to all of the work that you've done. And so if you're cool with it, why don't we just go ahead and dive on in? Let's do it. All right, so when I say dynamo, when I say brilliant individual, this is not something new, folks. This is something that is deeply ingrained into who Ashley is as an individual. So first question, it is very clear that education, the field of education has been of critical import to you. As yeah. early as age 14, yes. you were creating education opportunities for yes. other youth in our communities. Absolutely. So, um, if you could share maybe a little bit about the, what, what started that journey um, at 14, the how and the why, why education? I'm going to go a, a little bit um, before that, which is third grade. Third grade is when I declared that I wanted to be an educator. Um, but I'm also in love with entrepreneurship as well. So declaring in third grade that I wanted to be an educator, that I wanted to impact the lives of others, that I wanted them to enjoy the learning process as much as I had come to enjoy the learning process. I wanted to be a part of that journey for other children. So third grade is when I literally decided um, my teacher, my third grade teacher, Miss Betty H. Jenkins, I call her Mama J. I love her dearly. Uh, she is uh, was very, very influential for me and helped me to determine that I wanted to be an educator as well. So um, when I told her I wanted to be a teacher, she then kind of took me under her tutelage. Uh, she would bring me to her classroom after school one day a week. And she had me do simple things like clean the chalkboard or stack the books or or, um, collect the papers. Um, I was her helper in class and I assisted her after class and she gave me old textbooks with the answer keys in the back and so that just made me extremely excited <laughs> and I would go home and teach my teddy bears and my doll babies and I said this is it this is what I want to do. Um, so literally from that point on I just gave Every opportunity that I had to participate in a teaching and learning process, I did it. I was a peer mentor. I was a tutor. I was a volunteer at the child care center that I graduated from. Um, I chaperoned field trips as a, you know, when, when, when we were out of school or high school or when we would have early release days, you would find me at the local child care center volunteering or reading to kids. So when I turned 14 to fast forward, when I turned 14, I um, really wanted a job and I wasn't old enough. And I said, mom, you know, it's great helping you in your home office. Cause you know, my mother, uh, she was an insurance agent. So she had a home office. She she was the vice president of an insurance company, but she had a home office as well. And so I would help her in her home office with different tasks. But by that time, I wanted my own stuff to do. And I was like, okay, mom, this is great, but I want my own job. I want to make my own money. And so I wasn't old enough. Um, and she said, well, Ashley, start your own company, start your own business. And so that was the first time that I married early childhood education with entrepreneurship. So I literally brought the two together and started Ashley's summer enrichment program. And I sent letters to all of her friends who had children and grandchildren and said, 
you know, I want to tutor your child and I developed my own curriculum. I had my own schedule. My parents served as the volunteers. Um, my mom was the cook. My dad was um, the custodial worker. They both served as the uh, driver for field trips because I couldn't drive. Um, I tutored the children in all si subject areas and content areas. Um, we did related arts on Fridays. And so on Fridays is when we went to the zoo and to the museum and things of that nature. Um, it was it was a lot of fun and I was 14. And so it started off with three children that first summer. And when they returned to school, their summer, their summer learning loss had decreased significantly. And so they performed much better when they started back in August. They were focused, their grades were much better. Um, and they tested better too, because I worked with them on testing strategies and things of that nature. Well, fast forward, it ended up getting too large for my parents' house. It grew to 15 students. Uh, my pastor, who recently passed away uh, last month, actually, he um, allowed me to use the church fellowship hall. And so it grew from three students to 15 students and seven volunteers. Um, and it was held five days a week. And I did it three consecutive summers. And I charged the parents, they paid, um, but their weekly tuition <laughs> included um, their field trip. It included their breakfast, lunch, and snack. And it also included um, their instructional activities. And so my mother literally taught me everything about running the business side of it. Um, she took me to Sam's to purchase my um, meals and to help me prep my menu. And she helped me plan out my field trip activities and to determine the cost. And we ordered t-shirts so that everyone would have on matching t-shirts when we traveled. So it was really a whole thing. And, <laughs> and it literally uh, nurtured my love for both entrepreneurship and education. So when I went to Winthrop University, I uh, majored in child psychology so I could learn about the thought process of kids. But then I double minored in entrepreneurship and early childhood education. Um, and then I attained my master's of arts in teaching from Hampton University. And now I am finishing a PhD in teaching and learning. So everything that I studied Study that I do, um, a ton of my experiences literally date back to third grade when I declared that I wanted to be a teacher and impact the lives of other children so that they have a successful journey with education. Incredible is such an understatement uh, for young men and women today to be able to look up to an individual such as yourself and for you to be able to date back and say there was somebody else that also sparked you know, sparked my hope, sparked my passion. And now, now you're that individual for so many folks, I'm sure, especially I can't imagine what it must be like for those students that you had during those summers. If you were to go back, do you ever get to chat with them? Do you ever run into them? So let me tell you a funny, funny, funny story. My husband is an educational consultant as well. His name is Kobe Wilkerson. And he was in a school and um, he was in the class he was in the school. He, he does educational consulting at schools in a lot of different states, but this particular time, he was in a middle school here in Columbia, and the student saw him and remembered him from when he did work at the school that I taught at. So I taught kindergarten and first grade um, in a school here in Columbia, South Carolina in Richland School District 1, and she remembered him visiting that school and doing work in that school. And so she brought up to him, she said, I remember you. Um, you, you visited our school. And so she was just talking about the fact that he visited. And so she, he asked her, he said, well, what is something that, you know, you remember from the school? Or what did you like about your elementary school? And so she said, there was this one teacher that I really loved. And so he, she called the name and she said, I just really loved her. I just never seen her um, since then, but I really, really loved her. And he said, really, you loved her? And then she said, yeah, I did. And he, she said, do you know her? And then she, he, uh, my husband said, well, I know her, but that's not her last name anymore. And so she said, what do you mean? And he said, well, and he called me on FaceTime and said, she's my wife. Her name is Miss <laughs> 
Austin now. And so when she saw me, she said, oh, my God. And so, <laughs> and so now we're Facebook friends and she's grown and I see her on social media from time to time. And it's really amazing when I run into former students, even students that weren't in my classroom but they remember me from the school or me talking to them in the hallway or me participating in an activity with them. And it really touches my heart. And I told my husband, sometimes I feel like I'm much older than I am because those babies that I mentioned from my summer enrichment program, they are married. They are graduated from college. Uh, they are working on their uh, master's degrees and things of that nature. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, you know. So it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling, um, especially when I get feel good stories like that. Absolutely. And I mean, and, and to think about that impact and to know that they're doing all this wonderful stuff and just somewhere in their little hearts and in the back of their mind, you're, you're always there, you know, that, that sweet smile in the hallway, if you weren't, if you weren't their specific teacher, or if you did have the privilege of working directly with them, I can only imagine the number of stories that these young people would have to be able to share about the joy that you brought to them. But let's circle back a little bit to this, this, uh, this theme of entrepreneurship yeah. and the way that you really brilliantly tied in education and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So what I would love to chat a little bit about, and I think you know where I'm going with this, think is, I do. is discussing a very special foundation. So the Magic of Learning Foundation, um, it, you are the founder of the Magic of Learning Foundation. So could you share with folks a little bit about who y'all are, vision, mission, and maybe a little bit about Tori? Yeah. So believe it or not, I am, even though education and entrepreneurship are very important to me, community and philanthropy are extremely important to me. I absolutely love working in my community, in my neighborhood, um, in my local area. I love working to improve educational policy um, and the teaching and learning process overall. And so I'm very passionate about uh, reading, especially early childhood foundational reading. And so um, my company is Learning Adventures Incorporated, which created a children's book line. And so as a student at um, Hampton University, finishing up my master's, I published my first children's book, which was Tori Finds Shapes All Around. And when I graduated and relocated back to Columbia and taught in Richland School District 1 at Hyatt Park Elementary School, I used that book with my students and they really gravitated towards it. And they absolutely loved the concept. They performed well with the book. I used it in my lessons and things of that nature. And then the district asked me to teach that concept to the other teachers in the district. So they um, hired me to do an eight um, part workshop series. And all of the teachers in the district had to sign up for at least one of those eight sessions to teach them how to bridge those strategies to improve their um, reading instructional practices in their classrooms. Well, what I ended up finding was that the schools and the children that needed the content most could not afford to pay for the content or the books or the services. That's when I created the Magic of, Magic of Learning Foundation to serve as my philanthropy arm. And so um, that allowed me to be able to find businesses and sponsors who would pay for the service so that we could still give the books out, we can still give them the coaching sessions or whatever it is that they needed, um, and it'd be provided to them and they would not have to bear the expense if they were not able to afford it. So it allowed me to kind of connect my mission and my purpose and my love and kind of bring it together. Um, and so Learning Adventures offers it paid services. Mm -hmm. The Magic of Learning Foundation offers it for people who may not be able to um, pay for those services. So one example is this past summer, um, the Magic of Learning partnered with the city of Columbia. And well, not this past summer as in COVID summer. So let me rephrase, let me rephrase that. The summer before last, <laughs> pre-COVID, <laughs> we uh, partnered with the city of Columbia 
and um, businesses actually donated. And what we did was we did a, a touring week and we visited every summer program that is held at the parks and recreational centers within the city of Columbia. And every child received a session with me and Tori in a free autograph book. And it was totally provided by local business owners and community members who donated towards that cause. So me personally, I donated my time. I donated Tori's time. And then the donors paid for the students to be able to get the free complimentary books. And so that's how I've been able to kind of marry my, um, my for-profit work and my nonprofit work so that the work itself gets done and I touch as many lives as I possibly can. I love leveraging our community and our connections to create equity, to make sure we're creating opportunity. What a, what a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant mission. And if, so if folks want to get connected um, to either the philanthropic arm of the work that you're doing to be closer with Tori or on um, the other end, the more business side of it, how would they, how would they reach out and connect with you? Yes. Yeah, so they can email me at Learning Adventures Inc at gmail.com um, or they can email me at info at ashleyvandtori.com. Um, either one will come directly to me um, and, and if they're interested in uh, Tori events or um, you know we, we've actually done other projects through the Magic of Learning Foundation. One of the projects that was that was covered on Watch Fox and I believe WLTX and a few other news outlets um, this past year, again, pre-COVID, is we decorated bathroom stalls. And we um, actually partnered with the Junior League of Columbia as well. They provided volunteers to assist us. And we just put positive quotes on the stalls in the bathrooms of local elementary schools um, so that when students go into the restrooms, they would see those affirming statements on the stalls. And so that was one of our um, projects. We also hosted, and it started with the year of the flood, that, um, that significant flood that took place in South Carolina a few years ago. Um, my oldest daughter, who's now um, preparing to turn seven in April, she was one at the time. And my heart went out to new mothers and expecting mothers who lost everything in the flood. So because of that, I launched a community baby shower um, under the Magic of Learning Foundation. And so we received a ton of donations um, from everywhere locally. And we had this really nice community baby shower where we invited all moms who were either expecting or um, new moms to come and get whatever they needed. And we had tons of donations, um, diapers, wipes, um, toiletries, food, clothes, we had it all. And they could just shop around. We gave them gift bags and they could shop around and get whatever they needed. Well, we then after that first year, we partnered with the local diaper bank, which is um, Power and Changing Diaper Bank. We partnered with them and we continued to hold the community baby shower every year. Um, and I even tied in my actual business, which is Wine and Design, which is a sip and paint studio. I'm the owner of the Columbia franchise. So what I did was I tied it all together and we started hosting the community baby showers at the studio, the um, moms who were selected to attend, but it was need-based, so they had to be eligible in terms of need-based. When they attended, they got, um, they received a complimentary class. They were able to paint something for their baby's nursery or for their child's bedroom. Um, we always had an educational component. So we had someone come in and talk about breastfeeding or talk about diaper need or, you know, whatever the topic was for the year. Um, and then they were able to shop the collection of donations that we received. Um, and so through the Magic of Learning Foundation, I've been able to um, have nice partnerships with other people to really serve the mission um, that matters most to me, which are um, children, early childhood children and their families and their moms. Um, and so it's been um, beautiful to be able to impact my community that way.
You're such an inspiration. I feel like, I mean, I legitimately could sit here and just talk to you probably for the remainder of the day, if not more, <laughs> just to hear about all the wonderful things that you do. Definitely will have to stop into Wine and Design and check it out. Did not have an opportunity to chat about that yet, but we'll get to that maybe in one of our, our, our follow-up conversations for today. Happy to do it. So everything that you've shared has been an absolute inspiration, um, uh, whether you're a, a young person, a fellow educator, a fellow parent, a fellow community member. I'm wondering if on our, our, our last statement here, if there's any message that you would like to share with our kids, our community members, and our educators before we get to say our final I love you to you and yeah. uh, step away for the day. Well, one thing I will say, um, it's going to be one word that applies to all three of those um, groups of people that you just named, but it looks differently for each group um, of people. So the number one word that I would share for all of them and convey to them is to believe, right? And so I will tell children to believe in themselves and believe in their dreams. I will tell teachers to believe in their students abilities and to believe that they are capable to achieve at high levels and to challenge them to do so and to convey the love and expectation in them so that they know that you believe in them and it will it will um, make them want to reach that expectation. And then I will tell parents and caregivers and guardians to believe in their child's dreams and visions that they have for their lives and to nurture it. Um, that is one thing that runs through my entire life is that not only did I believe in myself at a young age, but my parents nurtured what I was interested in. They nurtured what I was passionate about. They supported it. Um, once I told them this is what I wanted to do, as, as I mentioned earlier, they completely stopped what they were doing to support my summer enrichment program. My teachers believed in what I um, wanted to do. They believed in my abilities. And as the example that I shared, she took me to the side and made sure she nurtured what I was interested in. She gave me materials to further support it. Um, so believing in yourself, but most importantly, to have your um, providers, your care providers, your teachers, your educators, for them to believe in you only allows you to really own it and then continue to move forward with working to achieve that thing. So that one word is a very, very important word. Um, it's a very impactful word, but it's also a very intentional word because in order for you to convey that belief, it feels like something. And so you have to say it, you have to show it, you have to convey it and all of those things that come with that action. Let me catch my breath for a second here. I, I just, I feel like I just want to run right out the door and just change the world immediately. Like, you know, snap. <laughs> you well, can I, do it. I believe in you. Oh, thank you. And I believe in you too, Ashley. <laughs> On behalf of the Behavioral Alliance of South Carolina, a grant funded program of the Department of Education's Office of Special Education Services. We just want to say we love you. We're so grateful for you. Thank you for everything that you have done and everything that you continue to do for the great state of South Carolina and for our kiddos and our community members throughout. Thank you so much. It's an honor. Well, everyone, thanks for tuning in today. Thank you for sharing in this time for us to allow Bas uh, Ashley to bask in the spotlight, um, to be able to have the privilege to shine that light on Ashley. It was wonderful today. Um, please follow us um, on social media, Facebook. You can find us at BA or BBA of SC. And um, you can find us on the web at www.schoolbehavioralhealth.org forward slash BASC. And that is exactly where you'll be able to find this incredible interview with the Ashley Wilkerson. Again, thank you so much on behalf of BASC and all of our affiliates. Y'all have a lovely day and we look forward to continuing to work with you, Ashley. Thank you so much. Bye. Right. Bye.